Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to another episode of EV Basics. In this episode, we're going to talk about relays. Relays are um, a fairly common item in a conversion. They're used uh, both on 12 volt circuits and your battery packet, battery pack voltage circuits. And uh, so uh, I think it'll be something that uh, people will find of interest. But what really prompted this uh, episode was that in our workshops, out of all the components we talk about, and uh, we get to convert the sand rail to electric, uh, one of the items that seems to generate the most interest and the most uh, conversation are relays. So we realized that we didn't have a video specific to relays, and so uh, we're going to talk about those today and hopefully uh, uh, explain them enough that uh, you'll understand uh, how they work and what they're used for. Basically, a relay is just an electronically operated or electrically operated switch. And they were first invented in 1835. And it was invented uh, in relationship to the uh, telegraph. They used relays to help be able to uh, send a telegraph signal greater distances. And so it's a simple device that has been around for a, a long time. Uh, anyway, um, most of the automotive style uh, relays use an electromagnet. Uh, and they're basically an electromechanical device. Uh, there are also solid state relays, all electronic. And there are many different types of relays. And so I'm not going to go into all the different types and uses and, and so forth. We're going to keep it relatively simple and to the uh, point and aspect of what we use in a conversion. So uh, basically they're used to control a circuit with a low power signal and, uh, and they offer uh, electrical isolation. Uh, so in a conversion uh, we use a 12 volt signal or system to switch uh, things with our, that run on our high voltage battery pack circuits. Uh, some examples would be uh, DC to DC converter, heaters, air conditioning, power steering, uh, main contactor, and basically a contactor is just a relay that handles high power. And we'll show you some examples uh, of those also. So anyway, uh, let me show you some examples of uh, relays and contactors. All right, we'll just take a quick look at some of these. We're going to look at them a little more in depth and we'll dissect them and, and uh, get to look at the inner workings. But this is just an example of a relay. You've got some uh, terminals. Here's an automotive style relay. You've probably seen this under the hood of your, your car. And here's a couple examples of contactors. Here's a contactor. This is your high voltage connections. And this is your low voltage uh, connection. Just another example right here. Again, your high voltage connections. These are your contacts in there. And this is our low voltage connections. This is a 12 volt coil. So, to better understand how a relay works, we're going to take a look at how an electromagnet works. And then we're going to talk a little bit about switches because. Like we said, a relay is just basically an electromagnet and a switch. 
And so first, let's take a look at uh, an electromagnet and, and how it works. OK. An electromagnet is basically a coil of wire around an iron core. And we're going to kind of replicate that now in a very simple way. I've taken a nail and wrapped some uh, insulated wire around it. And in my circuit, I have a little light bulb here to show you that the power is on. So we're going to connect it to our battery. Our light is on. And let me move into the frame here. A couple little paper clips. Now, this is a very weak one, but you can see I can pick up the paper clips with well, Let it. me show you another one. This is from the, this is a, a inside of a relay. Here is our coil of wire. And there's our core in the center there. You can kind of see it right there. And so we're going to run uh, current through our coil of wire and that induces a magnetic field into our copper or our uh, iron core. And that in turn then is going to attract this piece right here, this piece of metal. And in doing so, it's going to close the contacts. Let's see if we can get a close up of this. And so that's what will happen. We'll show this connected to power a little bit later on. I'm just moving it by hand. But that's how it works. Okay? Now let's go talk about switches. And right here, this is the switch part of this relay. But let's, uh, let's, let's look at switches in a little more detail. All right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, switches. And so there's different types of switches and for different purposes. Here's the basic symbol for a switch. And this is what we call a single pole, single throw switch on or off. And of course you can think of the applications for that. Next we're showing what is called a single pole double throw switch. And so we have a common, this would be our line coming in. And then when it switches in this position, what is considered the normally closed position, our current flow would be like this. In the, when we flip the switch the other way, it would go to the normally open position and it would flow through this branch here. Next we have a double pole double throw. It's just basically two of these. So we've got two commons and these are operated together. And so we have two normally opens and two normally closed. It's a double pole double throw. There are many different types of switches. You can have them with, with uh, you know, multiple uh, lines. You can have an eight pole double throw. You can have an eight pole four throw. I mean, you can have all sorts of different switches. Uh, the phone company used to have some huge relays, which again, just an electrically operated switch. So anyway, these are the common ones that we use in an electric vehicle. And so uh, that's what we'll focus on. I'll show you some examples of those working. Let me show you uh, a sample of each of those. This is a uh, just a single pole, single throw switch. You can see the two contacts. And then this is a uh, single pole, double throw switch. And we'll look how that electrically operates in a little bit uh, on a um, little circuit board here, and we'll see that work. So next, let's take a look at uh, um, uh, the switches on the board. 
Okay, what we have here is a little demonstration board. And so what we have is this is our positive line coming in from our battery. It's going to go through our little switch that we showed you a minute ago. It goes through the switch and to this one right here which is going to go through to our light bulb and to our negative side over here. So when I flip the switch the light comes on, flip it goes off, on, off. Single pole, single throw. Now let me show you an example of the single pole double throw. Okay, I still have our single pole single throw switch set up. So when I switch it on, our green indicator light will come on up there. It's also going to provide power for our single pole double throw switch here. The red lead being our positive, our going to our common. And then one position will come over here and go to a green light and the other position will go to a blue light. So depending on what position I have this switch in, either the blue or green light will be on. So we're going to turn on our single pole single throw here. And we can see our green indicator light came on as well as the blue. Which means when I switch this to the other position, the green light will come on. So one switch is controlling two circuits that run on a common power. So that's single pole, double throw. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the uh, corresponding relays because they're going to have the same features. So let's take a look at the one we looked at earlier. This is get the camera to focus on this thing. This is a single pole double throw. This top contact, that's my normally closed. When the uh, electromagnet is energized, it will close that one. Our normally open will become closed. And so this is the bottom side. And so we're going to have two terminals, which are our coil. So we're going to have a positive to the coil and negative to the coil. Then we're going to have a common to the switch and we're going to have a normally uh, open and a normally closed. And not necessarily in that order. I didn't look at the other side. But anyway, and while we're showing these, let me show you an example. of a double pole double throw. Hopefully this shows up on camera. Here we have our two contact or connections for our coil. We'll have a positive and negative and it really doesn't matter. It's a coil. It could be either one could be positive or negative. Then this first one's our common here. And we can see the coil in there. We can see this common lead coming up here to the one side, the switch lever here. And so this one's our normally closed, and this one's our normally open. And this is a double pole, double throw. So it basically has the same thing on the other side. It's two single pole, double throw switches operated on a common bar here so that both switches operate in unison. So let's take a look at these things on our electric display board here and, and watch them work. Okay, I removed the switch in there. We still have our single pole single throw switch. We're going to use that to turn on and off the power to our uh, uh, relay coil. So this is a standard automotive style relay. We can tell right away that this is a single pole single throw because it's got our two coil contacts and our connections and our two 
uh, switch contacts. They have a uh, schematic on them, typically. And if not, they have a, um, a printed spot on there which will give these numbers, which we'll go over in a minute. And there's kind of a standard for listing and uh, labeling these type of uh, devices. So let's connect this. So this is our power coming in here. And this is our ground over here. And then this will be our power going to the one to our common. And then this goes to one of our lights here, which we're going to use for showing that operating. And so now I'm going to flip the switch. Our green indicator light should come on, and then whichever one of these I'm connected to, it looks like I'm connected to the green one. So, whoops, I just connected the battery. Connect our battery back up. Now she works. So the beauty of this relay is that we could run smaller, less current uh, carrying wires from one end of our vehicle back to the other. And so this could be a very low current circuit here. And then this second circuit, which would just run this little light bulb, but it could be operating uh, you know, something which much higher current, um, like a, um, a relay that is turning on and off the controller for our air conditioning, or that uh, is operating um, our heater. Uh, we turn on a switch and it activates a relay, which then, you know, uh, turns on the elements to our heater. And so, that's just a single pole, single throw. Now let's take a look at the double pole, double throw. So here's that double pole, double throw that I showed you before. It comes in a housing just like this one does. We've just removed the housing to show you the inner workings. So, here we have our two uh, coil connections. So we're going to connect from our switch to our coil and then we're going to connect the other side of the coil to our ground side over here. And now we have a common which our power will go to. And then we have a normally closed and a normally open which will connect our two lights to. So there's the one light, here's the other. Now, let me see if I can adjust this so that we can see this work on camera. And I'll zoom in on it more in a minute. Hook my battery back up. And so our normally closed is already operating. Flip my switch to energize uh, our coil and our relay. Showing that we have power going through our switch here. And the relay then turned on our other light. We turn off the relay. There we go. That's our single pole double throw relay. Okay. I'll let your, you know, let you think of different applications for that. Um, but let's zoom in on this so you can see it working. I'll, I'll zoom in on so you can see it a little better here. Okay. Here we are zoomed in on our relay. The relay's off. Our indicator light is off. Our um, one light's on. Let's see if I can get these there without covering things.
Okay, let's see if we can focus in on that just a little bit more. But you can see the electromagnetic pull it in. See the contacts. See the switch operate. Okay. So let's talk about a few other uh, pieces of information that might come in handy when dealing with a relay. All right. Remember I mentioned that the relays come labeled with a schematic on them. Here's a close-up. So it's a little pictorial showing the, the coil and the switch and how they're labeled. So we look at the bottom side, you'll see those numbers. Okay, so those that labeling corresponds to our schematic. And here's the uh, the typical connections to that uh, numbered terminals. Eighty five would be our coil negative. Eighty six would be our coil positive. I said that's not in stone. You could do it either way. It's not going to hurt anything. That's just the standard that they've come up with. 30 is our common. And then like this one we were just looking at, which is single pole, single throw, 87 would be our normally open. On the single pole double throw that we were looking at earlier, 87A would be our normally closed um, contacts, and 87B would be the normally open. And so that's the labeling on uh, your typical automotive uh, relay. So now let's uh, Let's talk about uh, a few other considerations when dealing with relays. And so, other considerations or considerations for a relay, we've talked about the, the, the type of switching, the single pole, single throw, double pole, double throw, and so forth. The other things that we need to be uh, uh, conscious of are the current and voltage rating of the contacts. Another thing is um, the uh, coil voltage and source. In other words, there, there are AC coils and DC coils. And then mounting style. Uh, I showed you the one uh, that was a double pull, double throw. Let me grab that. This uh, is designed to fit in a, a plug on a circuit board or some other type of mount, but it's a plug-in style mounting. And this is designed more for like a firewall mounting. And so it has, uh, you know, a tab on here that you can put a screw in so you can mount it to a firewall or uh, a fender or, or some other location. And so those are the considerations, uh, you know, your contact ratings, your coil rating, and your mounting style. Um, so let me show you one other thing uh, in regards to relay. A little circuit that I came up with when I was in high school. It was kind of, uh, this was the early 70s. It was kind of the, 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 the simple alarm system. And so let me, let me walk you through that circuit and how it works. But first, let's review the schematics uh, for the relays. We, we went over it with the uh, uh, switches. This is the single pole, single throw relay. And so here's the, the coil we talked about. Here's our common, our normally open. 
on the single pole double throw. And we have again our coil, we have our common, the 30, and then we have the normally closed and the normally open. And you have the corresponding um, identification there with it. So these are the two most common that we use. We also use, uh, in our application, we use uh, the double pole double throws also. So uh, actually we probably use the single pole single throw and the double pole double throw most commonly. So let me show you the, the circuit here uh, that I was talking about as far as the car alarm. Okay, so what we have here is a double pole double throw relay right here. Here's the, the coil, and here's our double poles and our double throw. These are normally closed and these are the normally open. So what we have, like I said, to use this as an alarm. So this is to our 12 volts, to our fuse block on the vehicle. And then I added a little key switch on the outside of the vehicle. This is a key switch that you just operate with a key like you have on, on old alarm systems. Uh, today everything's remote. <laughs> this was 1971 or two. Um, so we have a key switch and then right here these are the door switches. This is a two door car so you have a, a, a door switch on each door. Actually operated the dome lights. And um, so when you turn on the alarm, let me grab something to write with here. So when we turn on the alarm, we're closing this circuit here. So now we have power comes through here, goes around to here, comes up there, doesn't go anywhere, comes here, doesn't go anywhere. But when you opened one of the doors, it would close this circuit, close that switch. So now we have a circuit here. So our 12 volts comes through here, goes through here, goes through our coil, and to ground. So now we have a complete circuit through our coil. The coil energizes, and this then happens. This goes, and, this, and these two are connected together, remember? So now we have this scenario here. And so now, current flow will go like this, goes through here, and back through a relay, and it goes through here, and this right here was my horn. And so now the horn's going off. Now the reason for doing this part of the circuit right here, that's basically a latching setup. So what happens is the horn goes off, the person closed the door and opened this circuit, if it weren't for this, you open the door, or close the door, the horn goes off. Open the door, the horn goes off. But by adding this part circuit right here, what happens is we now have another path. So once you open this circuit again, the door is being closed, switch being opened. We now have this, this was supplying power through here. Just because that opened up, we still have power being supplied through our relay, through our relay coil, and thus through our contacts and to the horn. So the only way to turn it off would be go back here with the key switch and turn off that, open that switch. Now everything goes back to where this is back to the normally open position, the horn went off. I hope you followed that. Very simple. Like I said, we close this. So now we have our current flow. Goes like this. Like this. Through our coil. And to ground. Well, that is when this is.
happen. This, this has to close first. And the only way that is energized is by closing one of these. So when that door was opened or that switch was closed, it was a normally open switch. So when you open the door, it then closed. That then energized the coil, closing this contact, making that path to ground, and also through the horn. Very simple, but uh, effective little circuit. So you can see, you know, uh, some of the practical aspects of a relay. So before we finish this up, let's, uh, let's go take a look at uh, a contactor uh, in an application and, and look at it work. So follow me. All right. This is a contactor in the vehicle. And uh, we'll close those contacts. Open. Close. We're using a 12 volt low voltage circuit to control a high voltage, high current circuit. That's typical use of a relay or contactor. All right. Well, that wraps it up. The contactor you just saw, of course, was a single pole, single throw. And um, in that particular application, you said it's being operated by 12 volts and it's uh, connecting the power to the controller. And so there's, uh, you know, up to 500 amps of current run through that. Uh, those are double lot cables that run to it. And we're controlling that with, uh, you know, a 16 or 18 gauge wire uh, on a 12 volt system. And that's, uh, you know, one of the applications of a relay or contactor. So anyway, hope you found this uh, uh, interesting or a benefit. Uh, like I said, this may be um, something that you already know about, but those who don't, uh, you know, are interested in these type of things, and we try to um, keep these things informative to those who are just getting started. Uh, there's a lot of information out there for those that uh, um, already have the basics. Um, there's a, a lot of engineers and so forth out there that are uh, doing conversions. But there's a lot of people that have never really worked on cars or done anything uh, with uh, electrical components. And so we've geared uh, our video uh, series is around those who are trying to um, build a familiarity and a comfort uh, when it comes to doing their own conversion. You know, bottom line is uh, it's an, an expensive endeavor. Uh, we've shown you the, the ultimate, you know, basic, most economical conversion that you can do using lead acid batteries and we're talking about $7,500 to $8,000 which you know um, is the cost of batteries if you do um, uh, a lithium package uh, that's pretty much you know you're not going to get too much less than that for just the battery pack with the lithium and we've talked about the advantages of the lithium in, in other videos Point being is that in order for someone to feel comfortable in making the kind of expenditures uh, that are necessary to convert a car from gas to electric and to do it in a safe and reliable manner, then you're going to be spending, you know, 
a sizable amount of money. And so our videos and ev for You Custom Conversions is dedicated to helping those who want to learn how to do this themselves. Uh, you can email us if you have questions or comments regarding this video or in regards to doing your own conversion. Uh, you don't have to buy anything from us. This information is, is given freely. Um, we do have limitations when we start spending hours of time uh, dealing with one customer. We then will refer you to our consulting service and, and have to make up for some of that time. But we answer most general questions and, and have worked with uh, individuals at length uh, for free. Our goal is to promote electric vehicles and specifically uh, conversions. The beauty of a conversion is that you take a vehicle that already exists, that you already have an attachment to probably, uh, a vehicle that you like, and allows you to make it a more efficient form of transportation. And a lot more fun in, in, in all the um, cases that I'm familiar with, and I've done a lot of conversions and driven a lot of different vehicles. And the electric is hard to beat. A well-designed electric conversion is just a joy to own and operate. And so we're here to help you, uh, uh, you know, accomplish that. And so if you have any questions or any comments, address it to ev for you at, I'm sorry, address that, email us at info at ev for you now.com. You can visit us on the web at ev for you now.com. Uh, and you can check out all of our videos by going uh, to our YouTube channel, and uh, which you'd already be on if you're viewing this, possibly, or you found this randomly. Uh, if so, check out our other videos. We have a, a series of videos uh, along the EV Basics line with these basic ones. We have uh, How to Convert from Gas to Electric, where we uh, in, in a general sense, we don't go into every detail on the YouTube videos, uh, but it gives you a great overview of the process of converting from gas to electric in that series. Um, we've got videos featuring a couple of our own uh, vehicles, our, our, our uh, promotional vehicles that uh, um, their main purpose is to go out and and uh, introduce the public to conversions uh, through our 1974 VW Beetle and our 1974 Carmen Ghia. And so we've got videos uh, that, you know, that feature those vehicles. Uh, we have uh, some videos that feature some customers' vehicles uh, that customers were uh, uh, allowed us to use their vehicle for that purpose. Unfortunately, most of our customers uh, don't want their vehicles being seen uh, uh, on YouTube, uh, viewed throughout the world. And, uh, you know, I can understand that. And so we respect that. Um, and so we have one that uh, was of particular interest, and this guy was very gracious. We actually kept his vehicle a little bit longer than we normally keep vehicles, but we did extra work on the vehicle in addition to the conversion also. But we used it in a dozen videos and that was the 1991 Volkswagen Double Cab Transporter, which is one of my favorites. I, uh, I told the owner of the vehicle that if he ever wanted to part with it, I'd gladly take it off his hands. Um, a, a really nice vehicle, would make a great shop truck. Um, really liked it. It was a very clean vehicle uh, for that type of vehicle. It had been well uh, maintained and cared for. But anyway, those are available for your perusal. And uh, uh, if you watch all of our videos, uh, you should be able to have, um, I mean, it'd be overkill if you watched all of them, 
but uh, uh, in doing so, you would have a good understanding as to what goes into a conversion, how to do it yourself, and have the confidence and understanding that uh, would make that uh, expenditure for the components necessary a lot more palatable. So as always, appreciate you watching, and please don't comment on the YouTube channel itself. Again, email those comments to info at ev 4 and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Richard with ev 4 u Custom Conversions. You want to learn more? You want to learn about all the components in greater detail? You want to actually install the components and wire a conversion? Test it and drive it? Well, you can. By attending one of ev 4 us three-day hands-on conversion workshops. You will get a chance to learn, discuss, ask questions about all the components used in a conversion. Wiring techniques, hardware used, safety, how it all goes together, and much more. But we don't just talk about it. We go into the shop and install the components in a vehicle, wire it up, and test it. After testing in the shop, we test it on our test track and in the industrial park where we're located. One of the vehicles we'll be using in 2014 is our sand rail. It's a blast. So come join us for three days of education and fun. Meet people from all over in a beautiful setting while learning how to convert a vehicle from gas to electric. ev for You provides lunch each day at great local restaurants. After hours, you can visit many of the local attractions, like Shasta Lake, the largest lake in California, Shasta Dam, the second largest concrete dam in the United States, Shasta Caverns. You can take a dinner cruise on Shasta Lake, take a walk on the Sundial Bridge, visit Mount Shasta. There's night skiing available during the winter. Visit Bernie Falls National Recreation Area or go kayaking at Whiskey Town Lake. You can check out the source of the Sacramento River. The Sacramento River is the largest river in the state of California, and you can see where it bubbles out, out of the ground. We've got world-class fishing, hiking, and biking, all within minutes of ev 4 use shop. So we we'll hope you'll join us. So visit www.ev4unow.com and register today. The class sizes are limited, so don't delay.